is that the Independent Charities Registration Board, uh, Chair Roger Holmes Miller, to come up and talk to us. Thank you, Roger. Tenakoto, 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 Katoa. Thank you, Paul, for your introduction. I am Roger Holmes Miller, and Chair of the Independent Registration Board, and I'm pleased to attend this year's meeting um, and address you today. It's good to be back in Wellington. The last few years we've been in uh, Auckland and Christchurch. I acknowledge our new minister, the Honourable Hanare, minister. I'm certain you will find the community and voluntary sector portfolio uh, very satisfying and uh, a reward, very rewarding also. Uh, congratulations on your appointment and uh, welcome to the vibrant, passionate and exciting charitable sector. Uh, I'm sure the sector also will value the experience and mana that you will bring to this role. Thank you. Karen, my fellow board member, welcome today. Um, as the Minister said, uh, Simon can't be with us today, um, but I do acknowledge my two board members um, and thank them uh, for all their invaluable experience, hard work um, over the last year, and their support in making independent and robust decisions. Our job is maintaining the integrity of the charities register so that all of you in the charity sector can continue to do the important work supporting New Zealand Aotearoa communities within that environment. I thank Natasha Wake, GM Charity Services, for inviting me to speak and for the support the board receives from Charity Services um, team within the Department of Internal Affairs. Um, Maria, can I thank you for representing the department today? It's good to see you here. And my thanks uh, to you all for attending and uh, welcome to this meeting. The value, as the Minister has said, is to understand the work of charity services and what they're doing. And I encourage you also to take the opportunity to ask them questions. Today, I want to speak to you and address you and make some comments on my personal observations from, as Chair of the Independent Charities Registration Board. New Zealand is one of the most charitable nations in the world. We have one charity per 168 people, the highest number of charities per population in the world. While this is a good sign for how New Zealanders give a lot of their time and resources, I also wonder if there is a duplication in some areas. My vision is for a charitable sector that works together. The Minister spoke about inclusion to achieve those positive outcomes for New Zealand. One of the benefits we've found of having a charities register is being able to see how similar charities are working in similar areas. Um, and this was recently brought to my attention uh, by Jennifer Gill. Uh, Jennifer was previously in Wellington uh, with the J.R. McKenzie Trust. Uh, she now is the CEO of Foundation North. Um, just in our discussion, um, she was telling me she understands in Auckland there are now over 30 charities um, working in the area of breast cancer. I simply asked the question, can some of these similar charities in the same areas work together? Is it always necessary to register a new charity? And, and should we be sharing the administration, the management, those back room functions and can we therefore be a greater way of achieving those charitable outcomes for the beneficiaries of our good work? I just ask you to consider these questions. That being said, however, the diversity of the charity sector is its strength and we're always heartened by the variety and range of charities that apply for registration. As a board, we're responsible for all decisions regarding registration and deregistration. We delegate, by written authority, a lot of our decisions to, directly to Natasha and her team at Charity Services. 
However, when there are novel issues or when charities disagree with charity services, then all those responsibilities on charitable purposes or serious wrongdoing, wrongdoing we make as a board those decisions directly. Advocacy has continued to be one of the most common issues brought to the board's attention in the last year. The Supreme Court in 2014, by its decision, clarified how advocacy law is to be applied. And we've been called upon to apply that law through a number of decisions on a number of occasions. It's important to highlight to you all here today that all charities can still advocate if it's a small part or ancillary of what they do. The Supreme Court decision also does not at all impact on those charities that engage in personal advocacy. For example, the community law officers and the citizens advice bureaus. The decision of the Supreme Court is really focused on those lobby groups whose predominant purpose is advocating for a point of view. The main point of the Supreme Court made is that although it's possible for advocacy groups to be charitable, the causes they advance have to be for the benefit of the public, as recognised by the courts. This involves us as a board looking not just at the end goal of that group, but also the means or their policies they support and how they support those policies. The Supreme Court Chief Justice, Dame Shan Elias, made it clear in acknowledging public benefit and causes advanced by these advocacy groups that it would be unusual to, for them to obtain charitable status because speaking objectively, it's hard to ascertain whether one side of a cause rather than the other side of the cause is for the benefit of the public. Having said that, I thought it would be worth explaining the Supreme Court's judgment through mentioning two registration decisions of the board showing how the board has approved charitable advocacy. The fate of the Christchurch Cathedral was, to say the least, controversial. The Charities Board considered advocacy to restore the cathedral was charitable. This was because the cathedral met the test for a heritage building and charity law. So advocating to restore the cathedral could be seen as similar to what had previously been approved by the courts and accepted as charitable. The Supreme Court decision I referred to had actually overruled the Court of Appeal making it clear that just because advocacy was controversial, it could still advance a public benefit. In Auckland, we had a matter before us from the Clevedon Village Trust. This involved a group that wanted to advocate for a new master plan for the Clevedon area. This plan was aimed at preserving the heritage, the environment, and the aesthetic qualities of the Clevedon area. And, was, and by doing so, was having open consultation with groups within the community. On balance, we thought the applicant showed that it did advance public benefit, consistent with previous charity cases, and we made a decision to register the trust as a charity. I must, however, emphasise that we make all decisions on a case-by-case -case basis based on objectively applying the principles of the previous courts, uh, previous cases of the courts. Looking to the future, we continue to be guided by the courts. We are independent and, and any process that follows through from the charity services to ourselves goes into the court system. And therefore we look to the courts for applying the rules of charitable purpose and serious wrongdoing. The courts have, over many years, shown a very balanced approach in developing and adopting to changing social circumstances. And I have to say, especially our courts within New Zealand. While still, they have retained the approach of analogy with previous decisions 
to determine what is charitable. We have our first Supreme Court decision on charitable purpose in 2014. And in legal terms, what, three years ago, that's actually relatively new law, especially when considering that the law pertaining to charities has been developed by the courts over many years since the preamble to the Charitable Users Act in 1601. It's a long time. We look forward to applying the decisions of the courts and continuing to support trust and confidence in the charitable sector through ensuring the integrity of the charities register. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, learn more about what Charity Services does, and I wish you and your charity all the very best for the year ahead. It's been my pleasure to have this opportunity to address you today on behalf of the board. Thank you.